Good morning, Gen Chem 1 students. Uh, I am making your weekly update video. Today is uh, February 15th. And so that means um, starting tomorrow and Tuesday, we are in week um, three of the semester. So we have a new objective you're working on now. Um, I wanna look at the topics for that objective really quickly. So here we have our topics list, and this is objective two. It's due Friday the 19th, 3 p.m. And so we've got a little bit of more dimensional analysis conversions. I really recommend that you take the time to write these down um, as you're working them out. That way, also, if you're stuck, you can just shoot me a photograph or a scan of your work. Um, make sure it's rotated and cropped and so forth so it's easy for me to look at. Um, and if you're a Mac user, save your file um, as like a, a JPEG or a GIF or anything that is not HEIC because those are not compatible uh, with our campus software. If you don't know how to do that, go look at tech tip number three, right, in the uh, week one archive. All right, so we've got some, some conversions that we're working on again, and that's going to keep coming up. So it's a really good idea to practice those and physically write things down. I know we want to sometimes um, skip ahead and just answer the questions because it's an online program, but the written work is really helpful in getting those correct so you won't get as frustrated. Uh, then we go into some stuff about the periodic table and actual atoms, and I'm excited for you on this because I love the periodic table. It's like my favorite thing in the world. So, um, yeah, you're going to learn how to navigate it in Alex, especially, but I hope you grabbed a periodic table from the lab. If you didn't, there's a few left. You can grab them at the front of the room in the cubbies. They're a green cardstock. And those are going to be really handy in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you get it. Um, that's yours to keep. Okay. And so you're going to learn how to put together chemical formulas and that's all about balancing charges. Okay. Don't forget there are videos for these things. Okay. So in module one, you have some reading about the periodic table. So that's all this stuff here in these last parts of the chapter are where you're going to learn about putting molecules together and the difference between ionic and covalent and stuff like that. Here's the dimensional analysis video that I referenced in lecture, but also information about uh, object objective two, which is um, really handy. I particularly like this little app. So you can go in here and load it and you can practice learning how to build an element just with protons, neutrons, and electrons. That's your starting place. And then you can also go in and and learn about charge and how what happens you know, if you lose or gain electrons. And then there's a fun game. The smiley face lets you know you're on the right track. So it's a good practice way to tell if you know what's going on. And then another app is about one of the most important sort of examples of the scientific method ever. And so it's very famous. If you took high school chemistry in New York State, I know you learned about this. It's a requirement. Um, but it's called the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. And it is the way in which we moved from the plum pudding model which was our first assumption about how atoms worked into the modern understanding of how an atom is structured. And so understanding this experiment is very, very helpful. So if you go load this uh, FET app, you can play with what would happen if the plum pudding model had been correct versus what actually happened. Um, but there's, there's also lecture videos about the same material. So you can follow along with the lecture notes if you would like to do that as well. And then of course, you're gonna jump into Alex and you're gonna get that work done. Some of you have already noticed that there is a new time goal in Alex this week. So that is a mechanism to help you study well. So much scientific research has been done on how the brain works and the best ways to learn. And this is uh, really important to apply in your own practice. So one thing that has been shown is breaking up your studying into smaller segments rather than doing all, all three to five hours of Alex at one time, okay? So just to show you what I mean. So again, this week, we're looking at the time and topic report in Alex for the entire class. Uh, it's Tuesday's class. You can see that you guys have a very high level of engagement in Alex 
on Thursday and Friday. And so this is better than what we had in the beginning where everything was being done on Friday. So I'm glad to see it's spreading out a little bit, but we do need to stretch that even more. So at the, at the moment, at least Saturday and Sunday, we really didn't have anybody working on it. And today we've had a little bit of work being done. So what we would really ideally like to see is kind of like a flat line, all right? We don't expect every single person to be an Alex every day. But the general guideline I give you is that you should spend at least three different days doing your Alex each week. And that's what I'm going to look for in your time goal. Okay, so three hours is your minimum. If you go over that, that's fine. If you are a rock star and you have already worked ahead and you've completed the objective for the week, you get full credit for the time goal for this week. But you do want to try to pace things out so you don't end up in a position where you are forgetting material because you learned it too quickly. We have our first exam on the 25th until the 1st. So there's a window. Each exam is in Alex and you get a particular amount of time. I think for this one, it might be an hour and a half or it might be an hour. Um, if you have testing accommodations, I need to have that information from OAR. And I also would appreciate it if you can email me to remind me to set that up for you. Um, even if you've already sent me your testing accommodations, I want to make sure everything is all set for everybody. But effectively, normally people will have uh, a certain amount of time within that date window to complete the exam. Um, the exams are not multiple choice, so you're going to be showing your work on paper and uploading that when you're finished. This way, um, Alex might not give you full credit because it's really just looking at your answers on things. But if you've shown some work where I can work out where you got stuck or what you got correct, I can at least give you some partial credit if you've earned it. Um, whereas, you know, online homework systems can really only grade if you got the final answer correct or not. So that's why I break it into two pieces. And so that's coming up um, shortly in about 10 more days that test opens up. In the meantime, next week we have what we call an open pie period this is your chance to go into alex and review things that you have forgotten or didn't know well in the first place it's basically your chance to prepare for the exam right so after you finish objective two it's going to give you another knowledge check just to make sure you really understood the material we've learned in objective one and two and from that knowledge check it may ask you to go back and repeat some stuff uh, that can be a little bit frustrating because you felt like you got credit for it already, and you did. The objective credit is in there, and whatever your score on the objectives were is the same. But your mastery score might decrease after a knowledge check because it has verified that there were some things you've forgotten or that you need to practice. And so we get a whole week next week to, to practice the things we need to review for the exam, and then the exam opens up. And so don't forget that all of these dates are located very nicely summarized in our syllabus, right? So look for the colorful thing. Um, right now, here we are, we're in objective two. There's 14 topics this week, so you should plan to spend quite a bit of time on it. Um, and then we have our daily time goal. So again, that's where you wanna spend at least three hours in Alex spread out over at least three days in the week, just like if we were in-person classes, we'd be coming to class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can do those three days whenever you want. If you study best on Saturday and Sunday and Monday, fine. But I do not recommend waiting until Friday morning um, to do, or in a lot of your cases, Friday at like 2 a.m. to do your Alex assignments, okay? Um, and then there will be our scheduled knowledge check after that from the 19th to the 22nd. So that's this Friday until Monday. Um, again, that is not to penalize you. That's so that you know what to study, okay? And you can recover any lost mastery points by just practicing things in Alex during our open pie review period, which begins this Friday and goes until the 26th. You should really do that before you jump into your test on the 25th. Okay, so that's the layout of things. I just wanted to clarify that for you. You guys have done a fairly good job. Um, still, Tuesday's class is winning 
at getting the Alex done on time, you guys had an average of 82% this week, which is down a little bit, but not a lot. So that's great. By the way, if you wanted to beat your score from last week, all we needed was one other person to do some Alex. Okay. So each individual, these classes are not huge. It's not a 300 person class. Each individual person makes a big difference in these averages. Um, Thursday group was also down 2%. So you guys went from 70% last week to 68% this week. I want that back up. I want to keep you guys in the C range at least. Okay. So buddy up with each other, remind each other, use discord or, you know, text each other, whatever you do, email, remind each other to get the work done. It's hard to manage an online class and you can help each other through that process. Okay. So remember that your objective is due Friday, three o'clock. It's a really good idea to have started it by now. If you haven't, jump in, get involved because then you can come to my office hours and you can ask me questions, okay? Um, for lab, group A is working on Excel at home, well, data analysis with spreadsheets at home. It's important to note, at least for my classes and any of the adjunct instructors who may have used my template, that your Excel file is actually due the week you perform the experiment. So that means if you're in group B, you missed your due date. It should have been turned in last week during your normally scheduled lab period because the expectation is that you're using that time to do the at-home experiment. Um, so if you haven't turned that in, get it in. If you did turn that in, the reward is I actually um, go in there and provide you some feedback and you can resubmit it for a higher grade. If you are turning it in late, so group B, it's, it's late now, then you don't have that luxury. Group A, you are doing that same Excel, um, Google Sheets, whatever you're using, data analysis with spreadsheet, experiment at home this week. It is going to use the data you gathered in week one in the introduction lab. Um, I haven't been getting a lot of questions, which tells me most of you haven't done it yet. You're gonna have questions, okay? So make sure that you are asking them of me or your lab instructors or both maybe, come to office hours, uh, et cetera. So by your normally scheduled laboratory period this week, everybody A and B should have submitted the Excel file into Blackboard. I'm just gonna show you how to do that really quick in case maybe you aren't aware of how to submit things in Blackboard. Each lab site looks a little bit different. So if you're not my lab student, don't be terribly surprised if things might be in a different spot. But for me, many, many adjuncts did just copy my course too. So it might be similar. But for me, you go to course materials in the lab site. It's not the same as the lecture site. And for data analysis with spreadsheets, you click on that. And then you would find the file. I'm just gonna put a pretend one in, okay. Find the file. If you have any comments you wanna give me, you can do that. You also need to check this box. I'm gonna highlight this on my screen. You need to check this box for every lab report you submit. Even if your instructor is collecting your actual reports in person, you are required to submit digitally online so that it goes into our database to make sure that there is not plagiarism occurring. And then you just click submit and I can't do it because I'm not a student, but you guys can. And you're gonna get a confirmation thing that pops up and you also get a confirmation in your email of what you submitted. If you wanna go back and check, did I submit that correctly? You would click on my grades and you would be able to click in the assignment then to see what you did. If for some reason something has gone wrong and you need to submit it again, you should be able to just go back into course materials and click on this same link and submit a new one. Okay, so that's going to be how we submit all of our lab assignments going forward. Even if your professor is collecting them in person, they still have to be submitted digitally as well. Okay, our first lab report isn't due yet. So, but I just wanted to show you how to submit the Excel file for the data analysis at home experiment. Group A, that's due in during your lab time this week. Group B, that was due last week. So if you haven't done it, please get it done. Um, group B is in person this week and you are doing the trace contamination experiment. Don't forget to print it. Okay, we had this problem last week. Um, we only print the first experiment for you. After that, we do expect you to do that. You would go to schedule and procedures. 
Um, I think that's probably called the same thing in each person's thing. For group B, you're on the second page. So you're gonna click the trace contamination experiment. You may have to click it again and you just print it. In addition to the pre-lab questions, which you can find at the end of the procedure right here, you can click it. Those should go in your lab notebook and be turned in when you walk into lab. In addition to that, there's a video here to watch. Make sure that you do so you are ready to go in lab and you understand what's going on. It's not a bad idea to also take notes um, in your procedure or on a separate paper somewhere on what the video tells you to do. Okay, so that way you get finished with lab and you don't get stressed out so much. Okay, and then group B, the other thing you're doing this week is you are going to pick up, if you haven't already, some lab sections already got it, you're going to pick up a little cardboard box with some supplies. This is going to be your at home experiment next week. This is what I was talking about in lecture where I said learning to use physical properties of things to separate mixtures is, a, is an important skill. So this is where we get to practice that. Um, if you've already collected your lab kit, make sure you have a 100 mil graduated cylinder that should have been in your lab drawer. Uh, make sure that you included that with your kit. If you didn't, you need to send an email to me or your lab instructor um, ASAP so you can get it. Other groups, other sections of lab have not yet collected this kit, make sure that you do put in your 100 mil graduated cylinder at the end of lab and take it home with you because you need it to do this experiment. Okay, so that's next week, though, that you actually have to do that experiment. This week, you are doing trace contamination. So don't forget about your pre labs, printing it out and watching the video. Okay, that's it for this week. You guys are doing a great job. Just keep it up. We're going to have the journal um, entry. So there should have been two already completed one for week one, one for week two last week. So if you haven't done that, jump in on that. Uh, I'm going to try to put the prompt for the journal article up by Tuesday um, to give you a little bit more time and space to do it. Um, yeah, and then don't forget about office hours and of course our class times. This week we're going to be practicing how to build molecules and so this will be an actual activity. It's important that you have set aside time for active learning. I'm going to be calling on everybody throughout the entire class and we're going to be working with some some apps and stuff online. So make sure that you're on a computer and you're ready to go for that one hour each week. Well, 55 minutes. It's important to, to make sure you are not distracted during that period. And by distracted, I mean driving or um, at work or anything like that. Okay, it's one hour. If you can't make it to Tuesday, I have a session on Thursday and vice versa. So let me know and I'll send you those links. But it's important to set aside a little bit of time to, to work on learning this stuff together. Okay, so I will see you guys in lecture and I hope you have a wonderful week.